Greetings and welcome, everybody, to this week's episode of UC Weekly News. I'm your host, as always, David Danto, and I'm Mike McCarthy with me. Mike, say hi to everybody. Tell everybody who you are and what you do. Hey, David. Thank you very much for having me on the show. I'm Mike McCarthy. I'm the regional director for the Northeast for Hudley in the U.S. And I know I sound very English, but I'm an Englishman that lives in America, so based out of New York. Aren't we all Englishmen that live in America? Well, I guess not. <laughs> to go back to that definition, although I do know the difference between the ground floor and the first floor and the elevator and the lift. And they, I once actually had an English to English dictionary, which was actually a lot of fun. Used that one when we were building um, things in Canary Wharf. So, Mike, anyway, before I go off on too many tangents here, uh, tell everybody about your journey. I've known you for a bunch of years. How'd you get into the industry? Where did you work before you got to Hudley? What's a, What was your life like? Well, my life before I was an engineer. I started off as an engineer. I was an RF engineer at Motorola, actually. My first um, uh, foray into the US was in Chicago working for Motorola there. I came back from there. I went back to the UK. I joined LifeSize. I left and moved out of the engineering business, joined LifeSize. I got into the sales side. I like the commercial things. I was at LifeSize just before they joined uh, or got bought by Logitech and did that morph over there. Then I spent, I was there for two or three years running their enterprise sales out of London. Then I moved over to uh, Poly, doing the same thing for them, based out of London for Poly for about two and a half years. Um, then I had a longer journey. I moved over with Starleaf, and I was at Star. I was the first hire at Starleaf in the UK when that business, when they were just coming out of stealth mode. Um, and I built the business for them over there for over a, about a four year period. And then they they originally sponsored me to come to the US, so I moved out to what New Jersey, and based out of New York, um, for Starleaf. Um, did that until. I mean, they had a bit of a calamity during uh, COVID kind of caught them out. They were very, very focused on the conference room, win the conference room, win that space. And the software is a gimme. And then COVID kicked and that hurt the company. And that was their kind of their demise, which was very unfortunate. I moved away from that. And then I took a little bit of a move. I moved over to a company called Utelogy, who do um, monitoring and management and type of stuff. Did that for about 18 months. Wasn't, uh, you know... It was okay, but it wasn't my thing. My forte has always been from uh, the video conferencing collaboration marketplace. Um, so I was looking for a while to find someone to come back in. I was looking for something innovative inside this industry. And, um, you know, everybody, if you go to Infocom, you, everybody's doing sound bars and cameras and sound bars and stuff. And the, the industry seems to have morphed into that that form factor. Um, and I, I ran into Hudley. I ran into Hudley. And I, I know most people think of Hudley as a, a webcam company, but I saw Hudley Crew. When I saw Hudley Crew, I thought, wow, this is really innovative. And this is something I can really get behind and really get excited and go to market with. So I've been at Hudley now for four months and it's been a uh, it's been a journey here. It really has. That's awesome. That's a great story. And, you know, the interesting thing, and I'm giving you my personal opinion, so please do not be offended. And anybody watching, please do not be offended. Okay. Um, most of the companies that you've talked about in our space anyway, were not market leaders, but were market innovators. They were companies that had an edge, had a better product, and was trying to climb in and break into the space. You know, if you talk about Starleaf, Starleaf was a very innovative design, and 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 you know, a, a number of the companies that you were talking about had that innovation, but just couldn't get the foothold in the space for one reason or another. And Hudley's the same. I mean, Hudley to me, you know, this was the 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 go right. This is what one of the first, if not the first, cameras uh, that Hudley made. Really, really awesome. Uh, oh, I never got a case. You should send me. Maybe, maybe it's in here. It's a little, it's a little carry pack. Now, it's yeah. a cool carry pack. Um, that's cool. You know, th this was always an interesting camera to me. Um, when we were um, looking at this for the first time, this was one of the first intelligent cameras to be on the market. It had the ability to do auto framing. It had the ability to do a lot of things. A lot of the 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 in installations that had it never really took advantage of that. People Which count in as well. Right. It had all that built in, but you had to actually use it. And very few people did. I saw, you know, I don't know, like 20 million of these installed in Google at one point, And they, they had it. They certainly could have used it. They had the data, but they didn't. Um, but, but the other thing that was interesting is that this is really a conference room camera. It's meant for small rooms, but it's got a form factor of a personal camera which was actually really interesting in the space. So so that's one of the reasons why, you know, our, I, it was an old commercial for candy in, in the U.S. I don't know if it's around anymore. Razzles didn't know if it was a candy or a gum. You know, I don't know if there's a personal camera or if there's a conference room camera. But but as you mentioned, you know, the, what you're doing now with Crew is very, very interesting. And, and let's actually talk about that for a little bit um, The while, while I hold the camera. The... Um, most of the larger players in the space, whether you're talking about hardware manufacturers or you're talking about collaboration platforms, are 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 experimenting with how to do automatic shots. Whether we're talking about you know group framing 
or speaker tracking. I mean, speaker tracking came out, you know, with Polycom years ago, first of all, and, you know, then it was copied. Those were mechanical cameras. Now we're doing it digitally in a number of different ways. There's a different kind of auto framing. So if you have six people in the room, everybody can get their own square or 15 people in the room, everybody can get their own square. And, and while they all have different names, they're, they all pretty much function and they're all pretty much the same. Crew is an interesting concept to me in that, Instead of saying that it's an AI director and then doing the shot of whoever's talking and a two shot if it's two people next to each other, it's actually directing it like like a TV show, which is my broadcast is my background, where gotcha. somebody could be talking and then somebody else is nodding and listening to them. And it's smart enough to know to cut away for a reaction shot, which is out, uh, outstanding. That's what a director would do. And it's kind of doing those kinds of things in its system, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think what they the beginning of it really was everybody was looking at um we, we were looking at you could do a two hour video conference, okay? You do a two hour video conference and everybody it's so exhausting and everybody's so tired because we're very focused on who's speaking and who the shots are going. And I think the uh the bright guys back in Oslo, they basically went and said, Okay, let's go and talk to some film directors and work out how why is it I can watch a movie for two hours and enjoy it and really be excited by it and I can't do the same with video? And they said it's the way that you 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 perceive the whole room and the whole shot. And that was about you've got the people speaking, but you're looking for reaction shots. You're looking for wide angle shots to see the whole environment. So what happened to that? And that's what they build it on. So what we do is we basically have at the moment, we have three of our L1 cameras. You can use them individually and they still have a director on an individual one if you want to use it that way. Um, you set them up in the room. You start the call and the cam one of the cameras becomes a director for the whole overall call. So it's taking all the shots from the other calls and it's sending what it thinks is the best shot back to the other end. And it's just a different way of doing it. And I think if you're on a if you're a remote participant coming into a call, you get the focus on the speaker all the time and you want to see the reactions around them. You know, the, the, you're talking and you want to see is that person speaking it i give you i give you a really good example it worked for me so when i was interviewed by hudley they i was talking to the um coo who was based out of uh, oslo and he had the vp of sales from north america sitting with him in the room and i had another gentleman who was the um vp of sales for the uk well for europe sitting in another window so i had him in the window i can see him all the time Daniel um, Johansson, who was the guy who was who was the COO, was talking to me. But I want to see what the I want to see what the VP of Sales is thinking, right? So I'm giving a reply to an answer. I can see the guy in the separate window. Now I can see when he's nodding at the side. So I'm getting this feel for the whole room. And when you suddenly, it's one of the really subtle things that when you use it, you go, "Wow, this is quite clever. This is really quite clever." And I feel much more comfortable in the overall environment I'm working in. That's what we're doing here. And, and I should have said this earlier. You know, right now we are. Well, this was recorded a couple of days before you're watching it, at least. We are at the Gaylord Palms right now at Enterprise Connect. So if you happen to be at Enterprise Connect or if you happen to be in Florida, um, in Orlando, you know, you should bop in and take a look at this. You're going to have a demo of this set up on the floor, right? So people can actually see it in action. Yeah, we have a three camera system in there at the moment. And we're showing a couple of different things. We started off with this, what we called collaboration mode. And our view was that... You shouldn't have people in a room with remote controls, setting different cameras, doing different shots. Just put the cameras in the room and let the camera decide what's the best shot for the other end. Okay. So we did that. The collaboration mode was doing all that thing with um, shots of people nodding and stuff like that. Customers come back to us and said, we really like that. But at the same time, if the chairman wants to sit at the end of the table, we want a speaker type mode that we can put our Hudley crew into. So now we're showing, so you'll see it in the show, we're showing the collaboration mode and the speaker mode. And I think what you're going to see us evolve in is different types of mode. Maybe we'll have a TED Talk type of mode where it's a presenter on a stage type of mode. But we've got, because we do all the process and everything in the cameras itself, so all the processing powers in the cameras, we can actually manage that and we can load that up and set different modes with the cameras. So we're kind of agnostic from what platform you're on. Everybody's using Google, they're using Teams, they're using Zoom, okay? And everybody's got their different types of shots they get from that. With Hudley Crew, when you walk in the room, you're going to get the same experience, independent of what the platform you're working on. That's what we're going to be showing at the show this week. And, and we were talking about it before we started recording this. You know, it's, it's, it's a trend that you're going to start to see more AI pushed down to the endpoints from the cloud. And the example that we always talk about is if you have the self-driving car and it's about to hit a woman pushing a baby, you know, it's not really a good idea to have to go up to the cloud and ask it, is this the right thing to do or not? It needs to be able to make that decision at the endpoint much more rapidly and it'll report the data to the cloud. It'll have the database up there. But, you know, we're going to start to see the, 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 the AI compute 
being much more important in devices because of the speed of processing that's going to take place. So you doing it on the device is going to be a much more rapid way of getting it done in a, in a more effective manner instead of having to count on the platform to do it. Yeah, exactly that. And, and if something dramatic new comes up that everybody likes, we can just push it out as a firmware update into the cameras themselves and manage it from there. And our director will look after it from that side. So, so I have a white paper out, I don't remember how many years ago, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, where I talked about the next generation of cameras is going to be camera arrays, where the cameras are all connected, just like microphones are all connected and they're figuring out what the right one is. Cameras are going to be all connected. You're doing this with three cameras now. I assume it's it doesn't take a rocket scientist to think that at some point in the future, you could be doing this with four cameras or five cameras or or tying in people's cameras on their mobile devices or whatever and have it do the same thing. Just pick from whatever the shots are that are available. I think if you come to Infocom in uh, June, you'll probably see something very very much, very much like that. We We kind of believe that a space is a space. You want to be able to put as many cameras in the space to get the environment that you want. I think when I spoke earlier about everybody doing soundbar type of things now, we actually started to limit what we could do with a room with the cameras. I'll give you an example. I'm, I'm in New York. We have customers got E70s, Polycom E70s, and they put them in because they were teams and they were team certified because at the time that was the only product that was right for that. But what they did was they stretched the boundaries of what they could actually use those in. So if you get a, if you get a conference table with 25, 30 seats on it, and normally the person who's running the call is sitting at the far end. When these 70, now you're starting to really test the focal length of the cameras there. Those are the sort of environments we just drop right into because everybody's morphed back into that smaller space and not into the bigger rooms. So that's where we really start to find some traction in the market. Yeah, it's 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 very interesting. And the E70 is a terrific camera, although, uh, you know, it, it should have been a consideration that every display on the planet except for the more expensive medical grade ones are black and making a camera in white. I don't know. I, you know, that's w w things like that are, are very uh, uh, helped by having end users involved in an advisory capacity before you've made decisions. Well, gotcha. um, and when you don't have that, sometimes the decisions are not the optimal ones. Um, there's an opportunity to make changes when you get input from users. If you look at what else they're doing, the Eagle Eye Director was, you know, that was before its time and a, a brilliant device, but they're end of life in that device. And I was literally in New York yesterday with a customer who's got those. And there's a couple of things. Number one, it's end of life, so they can't replace them as they go wrong. The other problem they have with them is when you do that bowling alley view down the table, if you're trying to, if you look really way down the side, you start to get this cascading of people down the side. Hardly crew, we can go a little bit higher and look over the top of people and start to pick out those shots better. And imagine if I didn't have just three cameras and I had another couple of cameras in the room looking at the other end of the table. It's a great, it's a great example. Another great example is we have rooms that split. And what I see is people split the rooms, push the tables together and they're starting to use zoom with two cameras on and they have one camera look at this end of the table, one at the other. And you have the two pictures in the zoom frames. Okay. Imagine putting crew in that environment. So I've got that whole coverage. I can see it all the way along the room. That's uh, that's, that's the place we're looking at. Yeah, no, oh, absolutely. And then, you know, camera technology is getting better and better. Um, I think the more uh, uh, pixel power you have inside the sensors, the less you're going to need to be dependent on optical, you know, zoom. Right now we have that dependence. Once you get out, to, as you point out, about 20 or 30 feet, you need to put in a camera, which, you know, I, I'm I'm very deflated by, by, by new optical lens zoom cameras. When we went so far with the EPTZ, we, we should have just kept pushing kept the up there, you know, as, as an industry. And, and, and cause I, I mean, I know there are some, some theaters that have um, a fixed, very high resolution sensors up on the balcony in front, always recording everything that's going on on the stage. And then in editing, you do your zooms and pans and everything else. And, you know, it's not, it's not the, 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 um, the most artistic production, but it sits there all the time and it always works. So crew is kind of a, collaboration enterprise extension of that kind of concept but it's doing it for you automatically you don't have to edit it after the fact yeah gotcha. No, uh, so really interesting interesting technology coming out anything you can hint at other than you know we were hinting at numbers of cameras anything else you want to hint at that we were talking about when you get together at infocom i think the i think come and see us at infocom i think in infocom we'll have we do what everybody else has we'll have a booth we'll have a private area where people can book themselves up and come and see some of the latest innovations that we're doing maybe it's five cameras maybe it's seven cameras who knows what they're going to show at the event um but it's it'll be worth coming and having a look at it then just seeing what we're doing in, the, in that space 
Yeah, that's 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 the 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 uh, the Norwegian uh, history of our industry from uh, going back to Tanberg, where you had to uh, sign an NDA to see the NDA. Um, <laughs> it's, it's always uh, always been a lot of fun and interesting. And there's uh, you know it's a diaspora. There's that DNA and everything we have in our industry right now. I think I find I haven't worked for a Norwegian company before, and I think I find that they're very very cautious about letting things into the marketplace before they're completely ready and completely yep. tested and stuff like that. And you know, having worked at somewhere like Polycom, where the, the marketing leads the actual product six months before the things actually launch, and I'm not picking on Polycom there because that happens with a lot of companies, but with the Norwegians, they're very much you know that Tamburg thought is let's we're not going to talk about it or even. Re- tell people what's going on until we're ready to release it um and, and i actually quite kind of like that 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 plays to my engineering background not my sales background yeah don't 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 show a fantasy only show it when you have a real product that's working and that when you're shipping it and that it's dependable yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's a different story there's a lot of stuff that goes out on the market that you know that gets returned or needs software updates to work and we all become uh, beta testers and end users from a lot of different companies so um, i remember I remember I was at Life Size. It was exactly that. We'd, uh, I was working in London and the big banks, like Dresden Climate and people like that, were like, stop doing your beta testing on us. We're happy to do it, but at least tell us it is beta. <laughs> but that's when you're chasing, that market was chasing that HD technology and it was a very rapid moving market. And it was fun. It was a good fun market to be in. It's still rapidly moving now, but now it's rapidly moving to commoditization. You know, the the the, the joke that the analysts tell is their grandmother has a sound bar and she's been dead for 20 years. So it's, 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 it, there's a lot of, and there are going to be new companies as we walk around this week at the enterprise connect, they're going to be companies we've never heard of showing these same four factor products. Are they good? Are they not good? They're certainly going to be cheaper. I don't know. We'll see. It's, it's been, it's an interesting, uh, interesting space for all of us to be in. So yeah, Mike, I appreciate, I appreciate you taking the time to, to join us here. If somebody wants to find out more about Hudley or find out more about what you do, what do you suggest they do other than um, visiting us here at Enterprise Connect? What, what else? Come and see us at Enterprise Connect. You can see everything we do and everything we launch and, and release is on Hudley.com. Um, and if you want to, if you want to, Deal directly with me. It's Mike.McCarthy at Hudley.com. I'm happy to chat to anybody any day. We spend, I guess as a sales team, we spend most of our time with uh, three tripods. I've got it all over here. Three tripods in the backpack with crew and running around uh, demo it. So we're quite happy to stick it in people's environment. I think it's one of those things. When you demo, you're in the right place and you need to see it in your own environment to understand how good it is. I went to a very big, very, very big pharmaceutical manufacturer based in Hudson Yards here. And when I put it in their E70 room, they were like, wow, it's just a completely different experience to what they had before. So that's the sort of, that's the, that's the reaction we like to get. Mike, thanks very much. I really appreciate you taking the time to explain all this in Hudley. And we'll definitely uh, take a look uh, at Enterprise Connect while we're there and all the other trade shows for the rest of the year. Okay. Thank you, David. And thank you very much for watching every week. Uh, next week's show on April 1st, we're going to have Eric Hansen, the CM- CMO of Mitel, um, joining us and chatting a little bit about what his story and what the Mitel story is. But until then, thanks for watching us. We'll see you next week. <laughs>